now the function of the cartilage is directly proportional to the integrity of the structure that integrity of structure is directly proportional to the balance of anabolism as well as catabolism happening within these chondrocytes right and the anabolism or catabolism is directly relation is directly related to so many changes that are happening in the synovium synovial fluid joint mechanics and so many other things that happen over the period of age and as you use the joint all of them they determine the balance between the anabolism and catabolism they convert themselves into stimuli so that they can stimulate or not to stimulate the chondrocytes or to stimulate them to go in favor of catabolism all these things they are a an interplay of various things happening and that's how you end up ultimately in osteoarthritis this is a uh, structural depiction of how the cells are arranged how the fibers are arranged this all gives the resilience as well as the capability for the articular cartilage to be highly smooth as well as highly strong enough and resilient to take the forces and not to get deformed right now let us go over to the collagen i told you it is collagen type 2 this gives the strength tensile strength to the cartilage now as you age the collagen also breaks down the quantum decreases the quality also comes down and hence the strength also comes down over a period of age if the strength of the collagen fibers which are forming the matrix by itself is less what happens to the cartilage per se it is weak once you load it it breaks down it cracks down it fissures right it delaminates and ultimately you end up in complete loss of articular cartilage now what about synovium the synovium is nothing but a, a, a sheet of cells actually sheets of cells right which line the inner surface of the joint that is inner inner portion of the capsule now there are two bones articulating and this is covered with a capsule the inner portion of the capsule is lined with synovium which is nothing but sheets of cells right so the synovium lines the non articular regions that means articular regions is the articular cartilage it lines the non articular regions and lies within the joints and hence those all those joints which have synovial membrane are called as synovial joints right it covers the inner surface of the joint capsule it also covers so many ligaments and tendons the classical being your knee joint of course shoulder all other synovial joints also but if you have to remember one joint whenever i am explaining just think of knee joint you can get that picture all the synovium is which is there and once you do arthroscopy you can see it very clearly now this synovial membrane this consists of two layers actually these are sheets of cells right without any basement membrane inner intimal layer and peripheral subintimal layer it is directly attached with the subsynovial layers okay so it has no basement membrane and merges with the richly vascular subsynovial layer and it directly attaches itself to the capsule both layers vary in thickness among various joints and in different portions of the joints the thickness of these layers vary and it's directly is attaching to the joint capsule okay and it doesn't have a basement membrane these synoviocytes the cells within the synovium are of two types one is macrophage type that means something is going wrong in the synovium they eat away that is phagocytic action and this these cells also secrete the hyaluronic acid that is type 1 cells or type a cells type b cells are fibroblast like cells they secrete the protein part of the synovial fluid that is mucin okay which is contributing to the what mucin clot test the viscosity is mainly because of this proteinaceous part which is the synovial fluid so there are two types of cells and once your synovium is affected by some means what happens the synovium which is just two or three maximum four sheets of cells right it becomes so much thickened there is lymphocytic lymphocytic infiltration within it there is synovial hyperplasia new blood vessels coming new vascularization coming into these cells these synovial fronds they become villus villi formation and whenever there is hypertrophy it has to occupy within the same amount of space which is there and hence they fold themselves into so many villi sometimes these villi they may become necrotic and they just get cut from the native synovium and these form loose bodies okay or they called as melon seed bodies in rheumatoid arthritis and rice bodies they can also be seen in synovitis associated tuberculosis also both of them in tuberculosis as well as rheumatoid arthritis once the synovium is too much of hypertrophy or hyperplasia of synovium of this sort happens these things these villi they break down from the native structure and they become become loose bodies okay this is what is being happening uh, in a degenerative process in fact 
which they are thinking that it is truly degenerative now there is an affection of the synovium and thickening of the synovium hyperplasia and lymphocytic infiltrate also in a degenerative condition of this sort means what means there is a some amount of inflammatory pathology also associated with the degeneration that has been the change over time that initially they used to think osteoarthritis as purely degenerative condition now having seen all these changes happening now they attribute these things to same pathology almost near same pathology that is happening in any other inflammatory conditions just like rheumatoid arthritis got it now what is happening to the synovial fluid synovial fluid is just just it is like the urine as urine is a ultra filtrate of the plasma synovial fluid is just like urine it is like the filtrate of the plasma through this basementless synovial membrane now through the synovial membrane as the blood is flowing through these capillaries it leaks out okay and this forms a synovial fluid so the constituents of the synovial fluid are or nearby they should be nearby to the constituents of the plasma at any given point of time if something is wrong or if the basement membrane or if the these synovial cells are hypertrophied and there is some amount of synovitis and the vascular endothelium is also permeable more permeable because of this inflammation it exudes lot of others other things which are not to be seen normally in the synovial fluid once you take the synovial fluid these are all the things you are going to see when you examine so synovial fluid is nothing but a plasma filtrate but there is an active phenomena that is going on in type a types of cells which is secreting what hyaluronic acid and type b cells secreting the mucin and protein part of it so in addition to the plasma it is having some amount of structures that give its that gelatinous feel that give its high viscosity when compared to the plasma right that is one it is fluid it is that fluid is very much clear and viscous what is the function synovial fluid functions are simple it is a fluid that nourishes the articular cartilage because articular cartilage is avascular a neural and a lymphatic hyaline cartilage is avascular a neural and a lymphatic its food is primarily through the synovial fluid now the constituents of the synovial fluid should be very much balanced so that the, the cartilage gets a balanced diet from this if something goes wrong if the synovial fluid instead of synovial fluid if there is blood that is not fluid to the articular cartilage now simple even blood is also there in the synovial fluid it is no good to the articular cartilage it should be synovial fluid only right now second thing is because of its high viscosity it just acts like a grease or some other structure which decreases the surface tension it acts as a lubricant to this joint surface so that the movement occurs freely without any friction and noises crepitus okay now once the synovial fluid is like this it is very small in amount say 0.2 to 4 ml in the maximum possible uh, joint where there can be synovial fluid like knee joint hardly you can get synovial fluid if you aspirate right hardly less than 5 ml right once you take the synovial fluid and see it is sterile to culture less than 100 leukocytes and less than 25% of the neutrophils and usually the protein count bit will be between 20 to 200 mg per deciliter and it will be 1.5 to 1 of albumin to other proteins mucin content being very high contributes to high viscosity glucose is normally 75% and above to compared to the concentration of the serum right there are no crystals seen usually in normal synovial fluid this is a table which shows synovial fluid and it divides synovial fluid into and uh, uh, various types of synovial fluids once you aspirate they are being divided and uh, you if you can group the group is first normal joint a non inflammatory joint from which the synovial fluid has been taken a septic joint and an inflammatory joint if at all i can divide it that way 1 2 3 and 4 right the third part mild and severe inflammatory have been put into 3 Z normal has been put as 1 suppose say if it if at all this is number 1 the normal synovial fluid is this what i have explained now and a non inflammatory synovial fluid hardly the cell count will go towards thousands from hundreds 200 to 2000 and always the neutrophil count should be less than 25 but when it comes to septic arthritis the last type okay here the synovial fluid is creamy opaque or the poor string because of the high viscosity if you put one drop of synovial fluid there it directly doesn't drop down as a drop it comes like a string right as it as you if you drop a bubble gum and if you just pull the bubble gum like this how a string comes just that way a synovial fluid drop comes which if it is normal it comes like a string but once it is going into a septic type of a synovial fluid if if you have aspirated a synovial fluid from a septic joint or septic arthritis joint you get a creamy opaque 
and poor stringing sinusoidal fluid it drops down like drops and it is opaque white and the the cell count will be usually more than 50000 and more than 75 to 80% of them will be neutrophils it is septic arthritis now non non inflammatory type of sinusoidal fluid it is hardly 2000 less than 25% neutrophils more than 75 to 80% neutrophils it is septic in between is inflammatory type mild or moderate or severe whatever it is usually they go from 1000 to 2000 to nearly more say 80000 or 75000 cells may go till that point and they will be between the neutrophils will be between 25 to 75% this is a simple description or a tabular chart showing what type of sinusoidal fluids you can see you can see purely normal sinusoidal fluids or purely sinusoidal fluids from a septic arthritis joint two extremes in between or a non inflammatory type because simple if the degenerative arthritis in stage 1 you can as well see the cell count might increase the neutrophils might be coming down from 10% to 25% but not more than that or it may be a, steer, uh, a clear straw colored fluid with good string but not as good as a normal one would be in early stages of degenerative arthritis but once it is going into a high end high end 1 2 3 4 grades of osteoarthritis it might go into a mild inflammatory or even a severe severe inflammatory types also you can as well see them in the inflammatory uh, types of osteoarthritis right now what happens with age with age the chondrocytes decrease in number and increase in size and the catabolic activity of the chondrocytes increase and the matrix it breaks down over a period of time and there is much of calcification going on the hyaline cartilage over a period of time it gets more converted into a fibrocartilage type right now the basic problem with the hyaline cartilage is doesn't have a perichondrium and hence there is no oppositional growth whatever the growth the cartilage should have it has from interstitial type of growth that means within through so suppose opposition is one layer over the uh, uh, one layer over the interstitial oppositional growth is layer by layer growth of a structure if it is cartilage it is oppositional growth of the cartilage oppositional growth of bone means what once the bone has formed suppose the periosteum the cambium layer it is forming one layer so it comes and adds to the already existing thickness of the bone that is the oppositional growth of the bone 